The future is electric. Just remember that, folks. This is the 2025, this is the refreshed model that we just recently did a review on. It doesn't really look to me all that much different from the previous generation, but there's a lot of refinements in there. So definitely check out the reviews on out of spec reviews on this new 2025 uh, Porsche Taycan. But I gotta tell you, I, I, think, I think I'd rather have, look at this, Kathy, she's still over there. She's still looking at the, and the Macan EV. Is that, wait, is she getting out of her checkbook right now? Kathy, you can't buy cars at the car show. You can only look. What are you doing, honey? Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave where we're standing on a huge line trying to get into Javits Center. And you may ask why. Well, guess what? It's the New York International Auto Show. And man, oh man, I've never seen the line this long oh, ever before. Um, I'm excited to see a bunch of different vehicles uh, this time, uh, you know, not just the EVs, but also the like the plug-in hybrids, everything. right? We're going to be uh, checking those out. And I actually like to see the prototypes. Oh, the new futuristic cars. You do? I do. Okay. I like them. But you know, Kyle always says, if it's a prototype, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. exist. If you can't buy it, I don't want to see it. Right. But uh, yeah, we're we're just just on a big long line waiting to get in, and uh, we'll gonna, get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. So let's get into it. All right, so Kath, we're finally in. Woohoo! And uh, it took quite a while. And we got our tickets already online, but um, wow, I've never seen the line that long before. I know. And you know, we've got we've got the entrance right over here. So, what's our game plan for today? Uh, let's go find some cars. You think they have any? Let's go see. All right, let's check this out. All right, so this show is just so super overwhelming. I mean, I've come here, I've come here since I was a kid, and I mean. This is just an amazing place to be, but since it's so overwhelming, um, what I thought we would do, Kathy, is go manufacturer by manufacturer, find EVs, and also I really want to look at plug-in hybrids as well today. And styling. and styling, right? How do do we think? What do we think of these vehicles? And uh, a lot of that's going to be somewhat subjective, but uh, let's start with Ford and. Let's go. Let's, let's go, go find an F-150. I've never seen an F-150 Lightning before. I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think that's Kath, look at this here. This is a plug-in hybrid from Ford, the <laughs> Escape, huh? What do you think of that? Actually, it's a nice little car. Yeah. I think it has nice lines, nice design. Yeah. Look at these wheels. They well, look pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, the wheels are pretty cool. And I, to me, that looks like a perfect everyday car. Yeah. Well, look, you know, one of the themes like we talked about earlier is plug-in hybrids are, even your friends at work are saying, hey, listen, you know what? I don't think I could go fully electric. That's what they're all saying. I Nobody's mean, ready to if do they're that. not ready to do that, a plug-in hybrid is maybe a nice compromise, yeah, right? And, and pick up over here. of course, here we've got the F-150 Lightning. This happens to be in the Platinum trim, starting at Platinum's 91995 Pretty fancy. An expensive little toy for sure, but uh, I like this red actually. This is pretty cool. It looks pretty good. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and you can't beat the size of this frunk. Yeah. I think I could even hide you in here. This is pretty, <laughs> pretty big. Well, we've spent a lot of time in this F-150 over the last month or so, and I will say it's like living in your, it's like riding in your living room. You got the lazy boy chair up front and uh, <laughs> And the sofa in the rear, great vehicle. And you know one thing, Kathy, you can actually, you can put uh, ice in this thing here. Yeah, so you and, have uh, tailgate. Yeah, and right? it's got a drain there. Yeah, no, they thought of everything. This is just fantastic. Yeah, the, the only problem is the position of where you charge this thing now that we've gone Nax. It's a, it's a problem when you're pulling in to juice up because unlike the Teslas, you know, this is where you, this is the port right here, CCS. And it's on the wrong side of the car when it comes to charging at Tesla superchargers now, which we experienced on the road trip. Not too bad because we uh, we left on the trip when there wasn't a lot of a lot of uh, you know traffic, which was which was good. Yeah. So 
But boy, this is a, this is a beauty. You know, this trim here comes with the 22 inch wheels, which means you're not gonna get the kind of range that you would get. Let me just show, interesting here. How big is the bed? The bed liner itself, they, they don't have any, see how it's already scratched up and well, everything. You know, I saw before a lot of kids hanging out. No, back but you know, the dancing. thing is like, they should have it sprayed in on a platinum yeah. trim. I'm a little surprised. The, the platinum black that we reviewed last year um, comes with a sprayed in bed liner, but uh, let's go check out the Mach-E. These are starting around 40 grand, and uh, in the GT trim, they're about uh, 52, but the GT, GT Performance will take it up even more than that. But, you know, look, we've we've done a lot of reviews on this channel on the Mustang Mach-E. It's, uh, it's an interesting car. Um, we actually rented one, remember, down in, uh, in Florida? Yeah. And it was fun to drive around here. I was just trying to open yeah. up the back to see what kind of room was in the back, but all the backs are locked. You yeah. get them open. And the front, you know, it's tiny. It's not, uh, yeah. you want to put a couple little things up there. Yeah, no, I listen. You know, we, we've but seen. It's a Mustang. It, it drives great. Yeah, the the GT performance is quick, it's fast. Yeah. So uh, let's keep going. All right, I know this isn't an EV. This is a 2500 Bison, but check this check this out. The tailgate over here, very cool with the lift step. But look at this. It's got speaker system here and a stereo with a kicker. I love that. Sort of cup holders right here, but I love that, how the tailgates have really just evolved, complete with, with a little handle to get up there. Guys like me. Kat, this is the Silverado EV right over here. Sure. Is. What do you uh, What do you think of that thing? I think it looks amazing. Yeah. The color is silver ice metallic. Right. It's absolutely stunning. And you okay. Know, you come around the back. Uh, did you catch this? Like the whole back seat folds down. This bed, I think, is huge. Oh yeah, you that see that? The, you see the fold down rear seat. Yes. That's a nice feature. That's what I was just trying to show you. Oh uh, yeah. That looks great. Oh, that the is cool. Bar here is you're trying to yeah. pull yourself up. The, the real story here with this vehicle is this thing is a charging monster. No it is a charging beast. This has a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, similar to what's in the Escalade IQ as well as the Hummer EV. Uh, the range on this is incredible and the charging speeds. This thing will charge well over 300 kilowatts and it's got a relatively flat charging curve as well. So um, yeah, pretty amazing. The, the wheels, what size wheels are those? Things are huge, very big. And uh, you know, what's interesting is the frunk is when you compare it to, let's say the F-150 Lightning, it's quite narrow and quite small. Yeah, it sure looks that way. Um, yeah which is interesting, but uh, you know, listen, this is the RST trim. This is this is done up with the, the truck we had on the cross country trip was a very basic, it was a work truck. Oh, okay. Well, this and so is this is nice, elevated. it's nice to see one in a lot better trim than this. And uh, yeah, I mean the range, just it's just unbeatable really an amazing yeah, amazing has done a fantastic job yeah. this. It's, i'd love to be able to sit in it but obviously you can't uh, apparently they're not letting you yeah I'm you know look at the screens it looks like it has some really nice screens oh yeah oh yeah you know the other thing we want to do is we want to check out the gmc trim and see which you like better oh, the chevy okay. or the gmc trim yeah. of right, this well, particular ev like this. yeah me too <laughs> what we have here is the electric blazer first time i'm seeing this in person and I think these kids like it. Yeah, they seem to like it. Look at this. Real nice. The EVRS. The EPA estimated up to 324 miles of range, 0 to 60 in six, six seconds. So not super fast. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'll throw, I'll throw the stats and pricing up on each one of these. They're, it's interesting that Chevy and Ford both were not really showing pricing on everything. Not, you know, right. Chevy definitely is not. But uh, yeah, good looking vehicle here. What are your thoughts, Kathy? I think it's a great everyday car for a family. I can see the size would fit a 
you know, a lot of people, some suitcases, some soccer equipment. Uh -huh. You know, it's a blazer. We had, I think, maybe one of the originals back in the day when we first got married. Yeah. Uh, yep. That was a great truck. Just trying to see. Would you rather have this or a Model Y? Model Y. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and you say, Why would you, ask me that? you say that and you laugh. I mean, well, I'm not trying so to compare what, this to a What do you think the target audience for this thing is? I think this is a great family car. This is sort of like the Volvo where, you know, you got a couple of kids you're picking up from the I don't the know soccer. if that opens. They're not op letting any of the backs open from what I can they're letting They're letting kids jump all over this thing. Well, if you remember Listen, Kyle, too, this is what he did also. So. You know, what's interesting is without, the, without this little E right here, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know it's an EV, Definitely right? Not. And that's kind of a that's kind of a cool thing, I think that that the mainstream manufacturers are bringing out vehicles that don't look like EVs but actually are. Right. So that's kind of refreshing. This is shown in a rear-wheel drive RS trim. I like the color. Again, again, again the color selection the uh, car show this year is pretty good. I, I like it. Look at this Blazer EV decked out as a police car. General Motors police car, as a matter of fact, I like this. But you wouldn't want that chasing you. Oh, I oh I definitely. <laughs> if this were chasing me, I would. I could outrun it with my ex, but I wouldn't. I would get pulled over. I'd have a nice conversation. And then you'd get your ticket. And then I'd get my ticket, right? But it does look good. That does look pretty sweet. Agreed. The Blazer 9C1 coming to a traffic stop near you soon. All right, so as we make our way over to the Chevy Equinox EV, you know, it's interesting, Cadillac didn't even show up to the show. No. So they... Um, Apparently there's a lyric. You can there's a lyric downstairs. downstairs that they're giving tours in, but the Escalade IQ that I was kind of hoping to see, I, know. I guess it's not here. I mean, we'll have to, we'll have to see. Yeah. But um, yeah, so Chevy is showing the Blazer EV uh, the as well as the Auto. Silverado. And then also the Equinox. Yeah. So let's 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 check that yeah, one out. Yeah, I, th I think they have a good showing here. Kath, here's the Equinox EV. Yeah. Um, well, I I'm, just not, I'm not. I'm not loving the front end. Um, I'm glad you said that. I'm not really. Either. Yeah, I mean, it, it's okay. It's 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 a bit. I don't know. To me, it looks a little nondescript. Yeah, I don't know if it's the coloring this that it's black, black, it black and everything. Person. You know, but it the, feels lower maybe than the Blazer did yeah. over there, a little lower, maybe longer. I don't know I mean, the specs it's, on it. It's okay. It's. I don't know how this is. I'm not sure why you would want this compared to a Blazer. I'd have I'm to, not sure either. I think they feel to me at this point a little similar. Maybe this is supposed to be a little sportier. I don't what, know. The, the, we were commenting earlier about the, the E there. What are your thoughts on that? I like the blue E. I do like it. Yeah. I think that's a clever design by Chevy. I yeah, do like I that. I do too. Look, you know, from back here, it, it's it's good. It's, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't excite me. Hey, wait, I'm not sure I get see. out my checkbook for this. I don't even know how to open it. <laughs> the cat's trying to figure it's out how to open it. Grab underneath it? No? It. No, they can't grab. Maybe they aren't opening it. I just saw somebody sit in it. Oh, well, Not there you go. <laughs> Uh-oh, folks, I think we have a problem. Kathy just looked inside the Macan EV and she goes, I love it. Oh man, oh man, I wonder if the contract could be broken. Could the contract be broken? It's, uh, for this, it may be. Ooh. I've been anxious to get over here to check out the Macan. All right, why don't you take a, take me on a little visual tour of this puppy? Hold on. All right, well, here is the Porsche Macan Electric. I have been anxious to get over here because I loved my regular Macan, and I thought the prototypes were ugly a year or two ago. Wait, wait, can you check your Apple iWatch and see if your uh, heart rate is increasing? No, it is, I feel it, I feel it. I'm actually a little a flutter right now. Oh boy, I here we go. love this electric vehicle. This may have my name all over it. Really? Well, you know what a fan I am of the Porsche Macan anyway. Yeah. And so to see how nice it looks electric and I was able to peek inside a minute ago. Yeah. And it is Porsche. It's those seats. It's got a great center console. And look how beautiful the front is. I mean, I'm loving this. Take a look. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is pretty sweet. I'm putting one. I think What do you think about it? 
I like it. Matters. I like it. Uh, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, this is pretty. Yeah. Okay. All right. So not yet, but maybe. Like next week? No. Like maybe, like, no. Like maybe in the summer. Love it. 10 out of a 10. So of course we, we know and love the Taycan on this channel and, uh, and all the other out of spec channels. And this is the 2025, this is the refreshed model that we just recently did a review on. And um, you know, it's it doesn't really look to me all that much different from the previous generation, but there's a lot of refinements in there. So definitely check out the reviews on out of spec reviews on this new 2025 uh, Porsche Taycan. But I gotta tell you, I, I think I think I'd rather have look at this. Kathy, she's still over there. She's still looking at the at the Macan EV. Is that wait, is she getting out of her checkbook right now? Kathy, you can't buy cars at the car show. You can only look. What are you doing? Honey. All right, there she is. She's doing her research. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm I, back. She's back. I was I'm looking back. at the Taycan. I lost you, and you're back over here at the Macan. I'm on the configurator. Oh now. yeah. Be careful with Porsche configurators. They can get it can get very costly very quickly. I know. Well, I, I don't need anything super fancy, but I what? definitely love this color. You know what? You know what? I I just want to say. What? This car is you. I know. It's just you. I know. Right? Well, it's not me. No, it's I not I would go you. for a ride in it no. if you let me borrow it, but it's you. Well, honey, how much I love my other Macan. I know, no I know, I know. Electric, I'm feeling this is... really strongly about yeah. this. Especially if it supports the NAC system, right? Because that's always my issue with electric cars and why I love Tesla yeah. so much. So, um, okay, so far, so far, so far, number one choice. All right, there you go. Oh, boy. Not Porsche, but... Um, this is the Nissan Araya. I don't know if you've ever seen this one before. I've not seen it. And this is being shown in the Platinum trend. It's a very interesting champagne-y with maybe a splash of cranberry or something. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's kind of a drink. kind of a cool color. Um, I'll make you a box. You know, all kidding aside, not a bad looking vehicle. It's just, um, yeah, I mean, they don't, again, don't have pricing. Oh, they, they do, $58,000 $58, for this. Boy, I'll tell you what, up to only 257 miles. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's gonna be a, that'd, that'd be sort of a tough sell, but aesthetically, that paint, that color, that's the right color to bring to a car show. I agree. Me, right? Yes, please. Uh, Oh my goodness, that is a gorgeous car, just beautiful, and super high end. Very fancy. The Rimac Novera. That is a crazy, crazy looking car.
favorites. I'll tell you what, my favorite display, and I do love Subarus. Um, it, this Subaru display is just fantastic. I mean, you feel like you're you're in the outdoors over here. They just really know how to how to market. Subaru loves pets. They've got a whole little little display here. But look at this. They get they brought in trees and everything. I mean, yeah, yeah. You pull on my heartstrings when you talk about dogs. I know, same, right? Same. You can't. You can't. Kathy, don't you love this display? I love this display. I mean, I feel like I'm in I Colorado. Feel like Colorado is I, what I thought. Yeah. I know. It's a fabulous You know, here. this is just just a great way to do it. And and there it is. It's unfortunate it doesn't have better specs, but it's a it's again, it's just like the uh, you know, the Toyota. All right, so we've got the Subaru Solterra, which is uh, the Subaru version of the Toyota BZ4X. Interesting fact: the uh, the BZ4X is available in a four-wheel drive, actually a rear-wheel drive version of this uh, of this chassis. Um, again, I I like the look of this this car. I like the look of the the uh, Buzz 4X as well, the BZ4X. Um, you know, this has got a 70. I think it's a 72.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Doesn't charge super fast uh, and. Let's take a look on the inside. Kath, what do you think of this? You know what I just said on the inside? Yeah. It's, uh, you Here, know, it's, get it, jump in there. Yeah, it's basic. Yeah, so, you know, sort of basic. Uh, screen is a nice size. Another screen up there in the front. Back is an incredibly big, good sunroof. Um, for me, it's okay. I don't know that I love this outside styling. So right. Much. Okay. I, I've never really seen one of these up front and close before. Look, I'm a big Subaru fan. Over the years, I, I've had a number of Subarus. Uh, remember the Outback? As a matter of fact, the Outback was the first car Kyle ever rode in. He rode home from the hospital exactly in a white Subaru right. Outback. That's exactly right. So it's kind of got a got a basic. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it gets the job done. I don't know how big the front is. The question is, is it a Subaru or is it a Toyota? <laughs> what do you mean? It's a well, Subaru. it's the same as the Toyota BZ4X. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Nice display, Subaru. Excellent. Very nice. All right. You know what? This is great, Volkswagen. Right? They're playing a Neil Diamond. I must say. Don't sing. I won't sing, but they've, uh, they're so showing retro. such a nostalgic video over there with the VW bug and they got the old VW bus and uh, someone's calling me and I'm going to decline that call. There we go. And, uh, you know, of course, we've got the ID force and also look at this over here, the new ID buzz. So this is the long wheelbase version. And, you know, the ones over in Europe, they get a shorter wheelbase, but these things, I think they're going to sell every one of them. I, I kind of want one. I think we got to get one of these. Let's check it out. Uh-oh. I think she likes it better than the Macan EV. Let's see. She's getting in. I mean, it is retro. This is fantastic. Oh, look at this. Yeah, you can put your McDonald's shake here, your french fries here. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Big sunroof. Love the retro. Love the orange. What fun. Total fun. Very cool. Yeah. What do you think? I like this thing. Yeah, who wouldn't? This is cool. The ID Buzz. Look how it just drops off. Definitely like a, like a little bus at the front. <laughs> Take a look at the front. Yeah. Yeah. I have not seen one in this color trim before. This is pretty. I don't think they'd be a better color trim. Oh, no. They, you know, the light blue I is mean, cool. If you're going to go do this, you got to be all in. Boy, these things, they're, they're going to sell like crazy. And everybody's going to start, I think they're going to start modifying them. You're going to see a lot of these things. Yeah, I agree. Very cool. That guy's getting caught. In and look, the look kids are that. loving no, it. That guy's getting totally caught. Oh, he's caught. stuck. No, that person was trying to get out. Oh, we we'll got it. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a little buzz buzz fun over here. I like it. Oh yeah. Yeah, little drama. So, of course, the ID4. This is the car that 
makes you happy, right? This is, uh, you get in one of these, you can't help but smile. We've, we've actually owned two of these. We, uh, or was it three? No, maybe three. Yeah, it was three. Originally, I bought the base model. Then I wanted the Pro S, which had the, the massaging seats, which- Don't talk about massaging seats. Don't talk about, I wonder, can you get massaging seats in the Makani V? Oh, the good question. Wow, that could push her over the edge. <laughs> um, no, but I remember this being a great car and very comfortable on yeah. a road trip. You know, yeah. primarily because we, uh, we had uh, two of these, they were rear wheel drives and the turning radius was insane on this car. Right. And then I, I made the mistake of driving it with the all wheel drive and the thing was quick. I mean, quick, limited, relatively much faster than the rear wheel drive. I ended up getting that. That was back when we were playing the tax credit games and you know, you could like flip the EVs and you're getting crazy money for them. You don't want to play that game anymore. But these cars are made in Chattanooga. You can see here because of the, the light up in the back there. Um, they've got decent size in the back. These are just amazing vehicles. You yeah. sit down low in them, you hunker down, you feel nice and cozy. And again, you can't help but feel happy in the ID4. I agree. Quite a, quite a few people interested in this Toyota Camry, but look at this right over here. I hope you're not a Mets fan, because what we've got here is the Toyota Prius sporting the Yankees logo. And I'll tell you what, I do love this design. I just wish it were a pure EV, but you know what? It is what it is. I mean, they, they're just not, they're not as committed to EV. They claim that they're doing your choice of electrified powertrains, hybrid EV, plug-in hybrid EV, battery EV, fuel cell EV. I mean, Toyota, you kind, you kind of missed the boat, in my opinion, years ago when you had the, the lead with the Prius. And uh, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a Buzz 4X over there next to an EV Go. And I mean, it's just, it's a nice looking vehicle. It just doesn't have the charging capabilities that I think is what you need. And we got a friendly Toyota rep over there waving, saying, let's talk. All right, so here it is, the Toyota BZ4X. Um, look at that, Toyota BZ4X owners receive one year of unlimited complimented charging with EVgo. I don't know how you guys feel about free charging. I'm not a fan. I don't think it should be given away. Um, but listen, if it comes with it, then you, you might as well take it. But uh, looks very similar to another vehicle we just saw from Subaru. But uh, EVgo, there you are. They brought in, a, brought in one of their DC fast chargers. Which one is this here? This is a Signet unit. But uh, yeah, there you go. The Buzz 4X, it's the BZ4X from Toyota. And of course the, the RAV4, Prime, one of the most popular vehicles on the road. You know, this is a plug-in hybrid, which makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. Um, you know, the fact is, if you do have range anxiety or charger anxiety, you can drive locally on, go ahead, sir, go ahead. You can jar, charge or drive locally on EV, on electric, and then when you go on a long trip, you go ahead and you and you take that thing on the road and you burn the dyno juice. So look, I think this is kind of a nice compromise for a lot of people. And these things not only sell like hotcakes, but hold their resale value quite well. So, and look at look at all the people around this Prius Prime, or Prius Prime, this RAV4 plug-in hybrid. Always a super popular vehicle. All right, so folks, here is the redesigned 2025 Toyota Camry um this is a prototype here being shown at the show and this will only be available in hybrid trim i just asked one of the reps about it perhaps in plug-in hybrid trim at least not yet is what i'm told so there you go that's that's uh that's something i haven't seen before look i i i think the front end is pretty cool it's kind of got these lexus sort of grill lines in there um, it seems to be quite aggressive looking, even in 
I don't believe this is like a fancy trim, but nice looking vehicle. They're going to sell tons of these as they always do. So look at here. We got ourselves a Corolla hybrid. And yeah, you know, one of the things about these companies, they, they you can always tell if it's a hybrid or an EV or a plug-in hybrid with the little blue seems to be the theme that's going on. But look, very nondescript car. Hybrid Toyota pulling out lots of hybrids with the Camry and, uh, and also the Corolla. Again, here's another example of Toyota doing the, the hybrid thing in the in the Highlander they call H E V hybrid E V. I don't know if that's that's what it said on the insignia. But uh, this is this again is not a is this a plug in hybrid this one here? No, just a just a hybrid. hybrid. Okay. Yeah, not a not a plug in. I thought I didn't think they had one, but yeah, they're showing a lot of a lot of hybrids here. And kind of nice bucket seats. Guess you got seats in the back. Fold down seats in the back. And there she sees it, the GV60. We're very familiar with this car, oh, can I try Kathy one? especially. And uh, what do you think about this versus the Porsche Macan EV? Well, I, let's face it, I, I've had this and I love this car. Yeah. Um, and remember, I got rid of it because of the charging situation. But listen, this is a good looking, fancy, sporty car. And the bonus is it has massaging seats. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's your favorite feature on this car? Let's go revisit. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. They're not going to let you put it in. Take it in the yeah, in the, the know, crystal but ball. You remember when you put it in drive, this turns around and you get the beautiful crystal ball. And yep. that was a beautiful feature, along with these very lovely quilted seats. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely a winner for sure. Yeah. Okay. Highly recommend and love. And this is the performance variant yep. with the 22 inch wheels. And uh, things quick. I mean, it really is oh, great, it's, it's great vehicle. Busy, it's good looking. You know, uh, like and we've reviewed this car on this channel and many others as well. This thing is, uh, you know, part of the EGMP platform of Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, similar to the Ionic 5. I hear they've got an Ionic 5N here, which I need to check oh, out. I see that for yeah, sure. definitely. Yeah. So the only two cars that Genesis is showing today is the uh the gv60 electric and the gv70 electrified so you know this is a conventional gv70 converted over to an electric vehicle whereas the gv60 is dedicated you know purpose built from the ground up but boy i'll tell you what genesis just does it right when it comes to interiors you look at these seats these quilted seats i mean that is just the south koreans they know how to do they know how to build really reliable cars, except for maybe the 12 volt battery issues that we're having. But uh, other than that, if you can get through that, beautiful cars, really amazing. The range not great on this vehicle, 236 miles, uh, but quite a bit of horsepower. And this is substantially bigger than the GV60. What are your thoughts, Kath? No, I agree. Uh, it's bigger, so I've got a bigger family. I mean, this. And it's plush inside, make no mistake. This is elevated yeah. and elegant. Gorgeous interior. Gorgeous. All right, yeah, Genesis, a nice display here, Catherine. Well, I wanted to mention that to you. If you've, if you've not gone to the Genesis house in New York City, this gives the real vibes of what you experience when you go in there. This, this wood styling in the back, these panels, they have a fabulous, beautiful high-end display here, which I think shows off their high-end car. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Kyle, Kyle's probably not going to like me for saying this, but you think this is cool. I really think that's <laughs> that's pretty sick. Agreed. I mean, the front end is massive on that thing, isn't it? I think it's gorgeous. I love these prototypes. Would you drive this thing to to shop right? To me, no, no, it's too big for me. But I love the way it looks. Oh yeah. No doubt. Oh, this was the GV60 I was waiting to see. Look at this bad boy. This thing is crazy. It's just, it's to me, it's just like a rolling oxymoron, though. I mean, a sports 
orientated GV60? I, I mean, I guess so. What do it's you mean? kind I of a. Thought it was very uh, you know, to I me, G Genesis is. Although, look over there, what they've got here. This orange is is like out there. Look at the whale you tail on the back. Your New York City taxi cab. Yeah. You get to your location so much. Oh time. yeah, yeah. I wonder if this thing, you know, the magma concept. I remember seeing seeing this over at, I believe, the Genesis house. They had it over there, but beautiful display here. Like you said, it, you kind of feel Good like you're... Uh, I'd say it's the best experience. display here at Thank the Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us Wow. This Let's hear what this gentleman has to say. Our Magma Series concept vehicles, and I'm excited to present them to you. This is our GV60, which we actually already have in our lineup, and it's on the other side of our show floor. It's an all-electric SUV. It is for sale. But I do want to emphasize to you that all of these that you see here, this Magma Series concept vehicle. Not for sale. Concept. So <laughs> while the GV60 is for sale, it is in our lineup currently for model year 2024. As you well, see, I'll tell you what, a lot of interest here. It is a lot of interest. So here is the Lexus RZ450E, which is uh, 0 to 60 in five seconds. Only 220 miles range with the 18, 18 inch wheels and 196 miles of EPA to range with the 20 inch wheels. And um, boy, that's that's not a lot of range, especially if you're in the cold. So, I mean, to me, I don't know. I'm not really sure, Kat. Well, I have another one to show you. Yeah. Right over here next door. And I'm going to show you the ugliest front I have seen in any car so far. The ugliest front? Ugliest. All right. The future is electric. Just remember that, folks. But it's this car. What is this? Well, it's a great color, but come around at the front. Let me All right, show I'm you. doing it. The RX 500H. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, they got the massive grills on these what things. What is that? It uh, looks like it's gobble you up if you've got your I'm not really sure what that is. A That's a lot of grill. Too much grill. Yeah. All right, so Kathy, here is the RX 450H. Now, this is the plug-in hybrid. What do you think of that grill? Listen, I think it's a great idea to have a plug-in hybrid. Yeah. I think this grill is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Look, sorry. Tell I'm me how you really feel about I that grill. I just can't get over it. That is a non-starter for me. So this is a this is a plug-in hybrid with 37 miles of all electric range, which you know for the average person I think is 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 plenty of uh, is plenty of a range for electric for the daily, but you know I don't know. Well, I, listen, the interior looks nice. Listen, it's a Lexus. It better be nice, yeah, right? Course. You know, and like this is sort of my disappointment in Lexus. I typically like the styling of their cars, but I am not a fan. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to have that big grill. And remember when BMW came out with the big Yeah, grill? I know. The I big mean, kidneys. Yeah, and everybody just thought that looked ridiculous. Yeah. I thought I would have thought they would have picked up on that. I think they could have designed it. Oh, they it did better. pick up on it. And, and they they, went they embraced it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Kat, so we're making our way over to Hyundai. Yes. Oh, this is today. the Santa Fe. Oh, yeah. I did not think that was a pretty front. Not electric, but again, we saw one coming down the road today, and I went, what is that? Yeah. You know not what's really bad on this car? It's the back end. I thought the front end was bad. <laughs> the back end? It's worse. I it's remember like, now. In case, you're, in case you forget what car it is, you know? Oh, yes. It's like... Santa Fe. But it's it's sort of this double yeah. thing in the grill. It's very flat. I don't know if they were trying to do Range Rover. I don't know. Or it's it's like. it's rare when Hyundai does something wrong in my yeah, eyes. I, Santa Fe I, I'm, really not, I'm not a big nice. fan. I I I, I do want to see. Here we go. Some electrifying. Stuff. Yeah, they got the. Let's check out the Ionic yeah. Five. We got to find the Ionic Five N. Maybe they have that. Oh, they've got the ride experience over here. Oh, that's what the line is. Yeah, back over in here. Maybe this is where the Ionic 5N is. I know it was tucked away, so let's check it out. Kathy, this is pretty cool. I'm not I agree. filming. So you can see right behind us, right, Kathy, we've got, the, uh, we've got the Ionic 5, right? They've got a, a Kona. They've got an Ionic 6, and they are ripping their cars. They're giving people little rides. This is right on the uh, main floor. Of the, the uh, Center. of the Javits Center, which is great. One of the benefits of, of EVs, All right, here right? they go. Here.
look at this. This Ionic 5N is actually really, really nice. I am, I am liking this thing. Oh yeah, I like this a lot. I like the color. Oh, I, I like the those. orange. Yeah, I'm good. The wheels yeah. look good. It's just, it's just fun to watch them go around. No, yeah. yeah. Fancy. All right. Get ready. Hold on, folks. I got to tell you what, that Ionic 5N looks pretty good. And man, that thing ripped. I know, That's it's great. Big, this is marketing at its finest right here. I agree. Bring this, this indoors is, like that? Of course. Amazing. That's really, really well, good. You sure can't do this on the streets of New York City. Did you see that Ionic 5N? That thing looked good. Oh, it did look good. I like that. Okay, then. How do you like that compared to the Model Y? I love my Model Y. How about the Macan? I love the Macan. <laughs> oh, wait, my heart's racing again. All right, so here we are at Polestar. Beautiful, well-lit display, off to the side. Very small display, but then again, Polestar, not a high-volume producer. They're showing three models today. We've got the Polestar 2, which everyone sees on the road. Um, but interestingly enough, here in the middle, this is the new Polestar 4. My first time seeing this vehicle, 100-kilowatt-hour uh, battery. Um, I need to learn more about this vehicle because I'm liking what I see. It's uh, quite sporty, hatchback, uh, looking looking real nice. I think Polestar is doing a nice job with their interior. If you can go in there, Cap, check out that that interior. They, they tend to have a very narrow sort of leg room space or knee room space with that, that dash, but uh, looks, looks pretty good. Um, typical hatchback here and Decent amount of room, I guess. But uh, now it's interesting here. Let's see when this comes down. This is kind of wild here. Can you explain? Is this is this something that that goes away? So there's what's the visibility out? Just purely a camera. Wow. Now that's going to take some getting used to, folks. I'm not so sure about that. We're going to have to drive that to see. There is no rear. There's no rear glass in this car, which is interesting. I don't know how Bailey would like that. And then over here, we've we've spent time with the Polestar 3, not driving it yet, I haven't driven it. But this to me, if I were gonna buy a Polestar, this would be the one I think I would get from a size standpoint. This is more my size. Um, I think this is really cool. You got this nice sort of headlight trim here and you got the airflow that comes through here, which is really kind of cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I like this Pulsar 3. This is a 111 kilowatt hour battery pack. I like how they always show their cars in white and they just show great. So, um, yeah, so anyway, cool stuff. Uh, Polestar, a nice display, although small, you did your job. All right, so we found ourselves a Lyric, a Cadillac Lyric. Cadillac, Cadillac didn't even show up to the show this year. Um, I am just not a fan of this vehicle. I don't know why doesn't do it for me. I think it could do it for a lot of people. It's actually quite a large vehicle. What it seems you, very long. What, what do you think of that, Kathy? Um, I, I'm not a fan, but I, I don't know. They didn't even bring the other cars for me to compare it against, so I would not. So would you take a Polestar 3 over this? I think I liked the 4. Even though it's lower? I just thought the styling on the 4 was really nice. Right, interesting. So I, I think of the 4, but, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a great use for this and lots of people would like it. It's Cadillac. Yeah, you know? I mean, I'm sure it's a beautiful car. Well, folks, this is the first time I'm seeing this Acura ZDX Type S, an all-new EV, up to 325 miles of range, and thing looks pretty, uh, I, 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 look, I like Honda. I like Honda products. I think they're very good quality products. I'm looking forward to seeing the new, the new Honda that they brought out. But look, this, uh, this thing is. What do you think of this color, Kathy? Well, I just noticed something that would make it non-negotiable for me. Oh, non-negotiable. What, non what do you, what do we got? So I well, from a distance, the color combination looks cool. But if you look really closely at the back, does it remind you of anything? To me, it looks like a hearse. I'll just jump to the chase. So not a his, a hearse. Not getting it. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's some harsh words from out of spec mom right there. Uh, that aside, Type S, they're saying it's going to be priced in the sixty to seventy thousand dollar range, respectively, between the ZDX and the Type S, which is shown right here. 
and uh, wow, they're showing a fancy level two charger here right next to it as well. But boy, what a color. I, I think it's a cool color to show at, a, at an auto show. But I agree. It would you, my would you right own away. that color? No, we've already, that me? No, 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 no. Definitely it's not. not. You know. What is that color? Well, what do you I, call that? I just can't get past the top of the design. I'm over it. Oh, man. That's that's kind of morbid, Kath. Well, I can't help it. I see what I see. I can't, I, I can't unsee it now. Oh, I no. Can't. Oh, no. All right, so this ZDX is on its way, folks, about a week away from showing up in your dealer showroom, so keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, it's interesting, Acura does not have any hybrids or any plug-in hybrids at all. So they're just uh, showing this all-electric uh, ZDX. I don't know. I don't, I don't really see a hearse with it, but, but the wife does. So, you know, that's never going to end up in our driveway, but it might be good for you. Look, I, I'm a big fan of Honda products, like I said, especially the high-end Honda products. Acura has always been a um, very well-respected brand. So it'll be interesting to see how the consumers um, adopt that vehicle. You know, price point, 70 grand for the Type S model. We'll see. I don't know. All right, Kathy's on a hot trail to the Hummer EV, 200 hour kilowatt battery. This is not what I think people were thinking of when we talk about electric vehicles being sort of good for the environment or whatever. This thing is a beast here. It is just a beast. Um, it is a monster of a vehicle. And I can't wait to hear what Kathy's impressions is. This is the first time you're seeing it, right? First time. What do you think? I think it's sweet. You like this? Oh yeah, this is oh, really boy. sweet. Love this. Look at the size of this thing out though. Massive on the outside. I just heard that gentleman say it's not big inside. Peek, in, peek your head in there and see what you think. They're not letting us get in there. I saw one of these parked at LaGuardia Airport uh, about um, three months ago. It's not small inside. It's not small inside. No, it's not okay. Small inside, but I'm trying I hope to it's not small it to inside. the cyber truck, and I, I feel like this is higher, obviously, than the cyber, the cyber beast. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, all I know is I think this is sweet. -looking. You like this better than the Cyber Beast? Oh yeah, that's ugly. Really? You know I think it's ugly. Wow. Uh, okay. This has some really cool styling to it. All right. And this color in particular, it's a winner. Wow. Out of spec, mom, liking the Hummer EV. <laughs> all right. Love it. Well, what we got to find is the uh, GMC version Oops. of the Silverado uh, EV. Okay, let's go look. All right, me likey this. This is the 2024. GMC Sierra EV Denali Edition 1, 754 horsepower, Ultium battery technology, and 24-inch uh, wheels. I think you can get the 200 kilowatt hour battery pack that's the same as in that Hummer EV. And boy, oh boy, these colors that they're showing this year, these chalk colors and sort of low-keyed pastel-y colors are really nice. And of course, you've got you've got all the different sort of onboard chargers there that you can power if you're at a job site. Look at that, how you can fold down the entire rear seat and also the glass. That that's cool. I think that's got a use. There's a use case for that. I'm not sure what it is, but I could definitely stick a, a nice long kayak in there or something. What do you think, Kath? Uh, well, if we ever got something like that, which we don't need, I, I can see of a secondary living space for you. <laughs> Put a nice, big, comfy mattress in the back when you're bad. Uh-oh. All right, so here we are in Honda, Kath, and uh, just was talking to one of the reps. They do have the Prologue, which we're going to see. They have no plug-in hybrids at all, but they have a CRV hybrid. They have a Civic hybrid or they're going to have a Civic Hybrid, and they've got an Accord Hybrid on display now. So this is, this is the, uh, I guess this is the CRV HR, <laughs> CRV Hybrid. You know, these CRVs are just bulletproof. I don't think you can go wrong with a CRV, especially in the hybrid trim. A buddy of mine that I work with, he got a flat the other day. He's like, Dave, I don't know how to change my tire. So I, I took it over to Mavis and I drove it. And it's a, 130,000 miles on his CRV. I can't remember what year it is. Thing felt great. I mean, these these cars are just unbelievable. They're just rock solid. So to have one of these in a hybrid trim, I don't think you can go wrong if this is your cup of tea. But no plug-in hybrid option for this. Let's go check out the Accord 
plug-in or the Accord Hybrid, and then we'll see the Prologue. All right, so here it is. This is the Accord Hybrid, up to 44 miles per gallon EPA estimated. A lot going on up there, folks. Boy, oh boy. Not a plug-in hybrid, just a regular hybrid. And from a styling standpoint, I don't know, Honda. I think you've lost your way. I, I don't, this, this just looks to me like it's going to be a hatchback and it's a trunk. I don't get it. In, you know, listen, I don't think you can go wrong buying any Honda product. I, I think they're all good, but that I just, you wouldn't see me driving that as a tailie. This wouldn't. Now, what do we have over here? This is a respectable entry. You'll see a review of this on uh, out of spec reviews. Kyle did actually spend some time with the prologue. This is a brand new entrant from Honda. And, uh, you know, they're getting into it, right? They have decided to enter the EV space. Again, they've got this like chalky colored car going on here and fully electric up to 300 miles of range. A lot of uh, ID4 lines to me, especially the front. Don't look inside. Kathy's getting in it. All right, go for it, honey. Yeah. Jump in well, there. Yes, yeah, I just wanted you to come in and check out the multi tone trim in yeah. here. All right, it's pretty nice. Good. I don't know if you would have enough headroom as I sit here and I look. Yeah, maybe. probably not a lot of headroom. Looks like there's. But that is a that is a open sun. You can open up that moonroof. Backseat looks like there's some good room back there. I mean, you got to like this uh, two-tone color. If you don't like it, don't buy it. But it's... Uh... Listen, I think this is a nice little vehicle. You got some, some air vents there for the pups in the back or the kids. USB-C ports. See if we can open up the trunk yeah, here. Yeah, if you can open up the trunk. There it goes. No, it doesn't. I think. <laughs> no, you can't. Open That's it. all right. Uh, What's interesting is they're going capital and then small letters across. You know funny, I actually noticed that too. All right, so we've got the EV9 here. You've seen this car covered on this channel quite a bit. As a matter of fact, compliments of Kia of Fort Collins. We've got a six-month loaner from Kia in a rear wheel drive fashion. A lot of people are, are eating this one up. Very popular here at the show. And it's interesting in this color. I, I wouldn't buy it in this color, but it's a nice looking vehicle. And uh, let's look at the specs on this thing. We've got a 99.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. And uh, again, this is, this is similar to the EGMP platform cars, an 800 volt system and yeah, really looking good. All right, so folks, right behind me here is an EV9. This is a special edition called the Land, which has a number of different features in it. Um, this is a, actually an ivory silver matte color, really tucked away back here. This is just one step below the GT line. This thing is about 70 grand, but boy, I'll tell you what, it is a looker, really nice. You have a lot of options. I'll throw the options up on the board and you can kind of see it, but a lot of a lot of interest in this vehicle, even though it's tucked away. And, uh, you know, when you look at the display that Kia's got going here, I mean, it's a huge display. And Kia, in my opinion, is just doing a great job. I think Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis all have come to this show with full force. I mean, when you look at this, this uh, Kia connected home that they've got on display, folks, this is not, this is not inexpensive to do this kind of uh, display here. And I think Kia's just showing out all the stops, putting it out there. And I am here. Yes, I am. And uh, and uh, it's, uh, how you doing? <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we've got a, a youngster in the driver's seat there. Son, are you licensed to drive that thing? You are, right? Do you give it the gas or do you give it the electrons? Electrons. There, he got, he's got it figured out. But... Uh, Check out this display inside here in this connected home. I mean, I don't even want to go home. I think I'm just going to stay right here. All right, so over here, you can see the GT Line EV9, which in this, in this blue color is looking pretty sweet. But over here, we've got the GT Line. Go ahead, folks. Don't worry. Um, this is the EV6. Of course, we know and love this car. EGMP platform, 
This is the GT line, not the GT, not to be mistaken with the GT, but, um, you know, great vehicle, very similar to the GV6, 60, I should say, as well as the Ionic 5. And uh, I have not seen the, the EV6 GT here, and I don't believe it is here, but I mean, look at this display over here. You feel like, I mean, this is just big bucks, folks. I really like the way Kia is doing this. They've got the floor, the LED with the floor and all of that. So good job. Oh, they, they do have the EV6 GT over here. I am mistaken. Let's go. Follow me. Let's see this thing. So this, this car over here is basically the comparable to the Ionic 5N, but this is the GT. And uh, this thing is not only a looker in this matte paint again, but look at the wheels. Look at the brake calipers. Um, yeah, this is this is this is a uh, six, sixty-one thousand six hundred list, and the seats on there. If you could just go in and check out those seats, very cool. I mean, look, folks, it's a it's an EV6, of course, but this one's got some <laughs> it's got some juice, some beans, and. Uh, there's so many different variants. You got the EV6 light R wheel, rear wheel drive, long range rear wheel drive, the wind rear wheel drive, the GT line rear wheel drive, and then you've got all the same in the all wheel drives, but then you come up to the GT, which is this is the real this is the right one to have. And this youngster here sitting in that driver's seat, he's got the right idea. Look at him. He's pushing every button he can. He's doing about 90 miles an hour right now in his mind, aren't you? <laughs> yes, he is. I like it. All right, Kath, we're taking the escalator downstairs, and we, what we haven't found yet is BMW, Mercedes, and my understanding is that they have places to drive EVs down here, similar to what they did upstairs, and also there's drives going on outside that we'll check out, but uh, let's go see what we got. This is the food court down here, and uh, I must say, as crowded as it is here, okay, it's well. not... It's not ridiculous. Oh, I don't uh, see any cars. I think over there. Oh, a charging station? Charging oh, station. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's for your phones. But hey, I found it. Yeah, I get it. All right, so we have found a whole nother floor, which Kathy is just super thrilled about, aren't you? I am. <laughs> these are all the, the sports cars. People still loving these cars down there. And beautiful. And you know what I see down there? What? Some really nice hot pretzels. Oh, hot pretzels. I think it may be pretzel time. Pretzel time? Really? Yep. All right. And then over there, they're giving rides in all different kinds of EVs, which we want to go check out. I really want to see if the Lucid Gravity is here. I, I thought I just it was. I don't think it's down in this area. This well, let's go like check. I don't know. Like let's go check it out. 500 cars. Well, first, I got to get you a pretzel. Oh, yeah. All right. For those of you who've never been to the New York International Auto Show, it's just it's just so massive. Um, you know, they, they, there's three floors, and the third floor upstairs is where they have all the vendors. You know, where the guys that they put like they put fire on the hood, and they and they they use the, some cleaning product or whatever it is, or they got some special no nonstick frying pan that 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 you know people. People want it, you can buy them. So I love going to that place. It's it's like all the tacky stuff. Uh, if you flip the camera around, there's some cool stuff going on out here. I think it is that Jeep uh, rock climbing. Oh yeah, they have the doing. outdoor Jeep rock climbing thing. And yeah. and we all know that they have the, you know, the plug-in hybrid Jeep, the, the E or whatever you call it. And uh, we could check that out, but let's go downstairs and see what's, what's going on down here. Oh wait. Plus this pretzels. Pretzel time. We got to do, we got to do pretzels. Are you going to have mustard on yours, like a true New Yorker? No, no. no? you're from Connecticut. Yeah, no, no mustard. <laughs> and folks, what's a car show without some dogs? You got to have dogs at a car show. Look at this beautiful pup down here. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, just amazing. You got to love these dogs. Hello, hello, friends. How you doing, buddy? Huh? You liking the car show? <laughs> hey, Dave, what did you just order? I ordered a bottle of water and a pretzel. Woohoo! 
It's going to be about $84, just I you bet. watch. Let's get in and get the water. How much was that? $12. How much? $12. $12 for a bottle of water and a pretzel. Okay, then. Oh, boy. Welcome to New York. Pretzel time. <laughs> right behind this crowd of people Whoa. Yeah. is someone leaning on a Tesla here with their pocketbook on it. I mean, I don't know. If that were my car, I wouldn't be too happy, but obviously that's not Tesla's display, but that's the only Tesla I've seen the whole day. We've got an interesting thing here downstairs at the International Auto Show this year. It's an EV test track, and they're ripping the EVs here pretty good. This is the finish line over here, but let's see what they've got on the track because they have a pretty good sampling of cars today. All right, so what do we have here? First, we've got an ID4 going about two miles an hour, and here comes another ID4 getting on it a little bit better. Ah, they just finished the track there. Oh boy, an F-150 on it. Oh yeah. There goes the Lightning. We got the Lexus EV finishing up the race there. Cadillac Lyric, hello, finishing up their race. Maki -E ripping it around the corners there. I believe they've got a Lucid here. Here comes that ID4 again, finishing up. And oh, here comes the Lucid. Oh yeah. Wow. He's on it. He's on it. F-150. This guy is hammering it pretty good. Another Lucid coming through. Stealth Gray, nice. Not a performance, but that's okay. And a Mustang Mach-E. We got a Silverado EV. Ah, uh, here comes another Lucid. Finishing up the track. The Lexus right behind him. Oh, he's going around for number two. There you go. And the Lucid for the final stretch. There it goes. Oh, they're cranking the tunes in the thing too. Beautiful. EV9 going about three. Come on, driver. We'll watch him come around the next time. Where's the EV6 GT? You know it's the GT. It's got that matte paint and, oh yeah, now he's driving. See those yellow brake calipers kind of give it away. Thing's a beast. Wow, Lexus is on it pretty good. The Lyric. Oh wow, a lot of body roll, a lot of body roll there. A Nissan Aria coming through. Kia EV9, finishing up the race there. Wave, wave. So I'm looking at the logistics as far as how you get a ride in one of these EVs, and each car brand has got their own booth here. You see the Lexus has got people standing online right here, and you got Lucid over there, and boy, oh boy, there's a ton of people wanting to take a ride in a Lucid Air, more than I've ever seen. So maybe the demand is real. I mean, there's a lot of people looking to get a ride in the Lucid Air, and the guys driving them, they're ripping them pretty good. The other one, the best driver out there, He's driving the F-150 Lightning, for sure. The guy's ripping it on the track. So right behind me, you can see the Electric Vehicle Discovery Center here. Kind of a nice display, so if you're interested in learning more about EVs and potentially how to charge them and do all that, they got them right here. People can answer your questions, figure out what's the difference between charging a car on a level one versus a level two versus DC fast charging. They're here to answer your questions, which is a real nice touch. And, um, you know, setting that up right over here, you've got Evolve New York, which is, uh, look at this, they're 
This is one of the DC fast charging companies that are putting out DC fast chargers. Um, and you can see that we've charged on these in the past, the Electrify America in conjunction with Evolve New York, Upstate New York. You remember we did that? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's good to see them out here with a, with a Mustang Mach-E. And look at this, they got their Oneida County, New York State, New York Power Authority. Which is uh, which is pretty good. So, hats off to you know you folks for coming out here to share the education. It's important for people to understand what's going on with respect to, uh, and of course, hats off to the New York City Police Department. Look at this, look at this Harley over here with the sidecar. You gotta love that. And, uh, and of course, they're showing you letting the kids get it, get it, go in and see what it's really like in a in a patrol car. So. Here we've got Lucid's display over here, and I don't, I don't think I see, I don't think I see a gravity. They may have had it here just on press day, and took it away. But I'm going to look for it because I haven't seen it yet. So what we've got here is a uh, touring with the stealth package with the glass roof. They're great cars, and they did announce the NAC support. However, these are super high voltage cars that on uh, the current V3s that are out there for Tesla, they charge really poorly um i mean you know less than 50 kilowatts and so that's a problem but great car it's good to see a lot of people over here checking them out and good to see lucid out here i love it in a silver color i think that's beautiful really looking nice so but i don't see a gravity unfortunately uh, what are you going to do i'm going to ask one of the reps to see if they if they've got it this was the this was the seating color trim that I had in mind with the white seats and the orange thread. I always felt like the orange thread over here sort of created some somewhat of a glare in the in the dashboard that I didn't love. And uh, the clamshell trunk is uh, it's super wide, but it's it's not a lot of distance between here and here to get your stuff in and out of there. Uh, the front is really the showpiece of this vehicle when it comes to storage, but um, you know, great sedan, and of course the 900 volt, 860 or 960 volt technology. Look how small this battery is. I mean, this battery, this motor is it's just incredible. And of course, the Lucid Air battery. You can see the cells right in there, the size of them. Think of a double A battery. These are, these are. Uh, Bit, bit larger than that so yeah this is a 112 kilowatt hour battery pack that goes into into the uh, grand touring and then uh, the touring and then the and then the base model the pure get much smaller batteries so great range monster charging speeds when you find the right 350 kilowatt charger from EA but uh, when the V4s come out we can't wait to test them thanks for coming out lucid yeah, I was just talking to the guys from Lucid, and and they are without a doubt the most popular. I mean, people want to get into and in test drive these uh, these Lucids over here. You can see way more people here at Lucid than any other booth. And I did find out that they they don't have the gravity here at the car show, but they do have it at the meatpacking uh, location, which is just you know just a little south here. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to convince Kathy to go there. She's getting super tired. It's been a long day, and we parked quite a far, quite a, quite a bit distance away. But what we're going to do, first of all, I need to confirm that BMW and Mercedes are both not here. I can't believe they're not here. We got to find out where they are, because that's strange. So let's ask. And uh, if they are here, then we'll take a quick run through there. Then what we'll do, because your arms are crossed and you're not speaking. Uh, which means, Dave, wrap it up. Um, so you're not the only ones who want this video to end. What? Well, it's been a, lo a long day, and I'm just yeah, getting a little wilted. A little wilted, yes. Can I interest you in a subscription of the Daily News, honey? No, thank no? you. No? Right up over there, they're selling, they got the post. They're giving away a free baseball cap. I mean, these are the fun parts of uh, the car show. But all the booths that we are going to go up and see, real fast we're going to do a run through you don't run all the vendors we're going to go and we're going to check dave it out doesn't run. dave doesn't run i run i do 
I do run. You jog. I jog. I jog really slowly, <laughs> but I jog. Um, but let's let's find out if BMW and Mercedes are here or not, and then we'll go see the vendor displays, and then we're out of here. All right, so this is the fun part of the, the car show. I've always loved this. It's the, uh, it's all the vendor displays. You know, <laughs> fill this piece of paper out, win $25,000 or a free Model 3. Get your t-shirts. There's there. all There's kinds of like stuff here. This is here. where I mean, pure this. sales. Dale Carnegie would be proud here. This is where it all happens. T-Mobile, um, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different, I guess, uh, here's your future of new college, NYADI, the College of Transportation Technology. So this is your opportunity for to sort of like, you know, share what you're doing. And there's some good stuff here, without a doubt. Manhattan College, look at this. Video games, jewelry, maybe that'll make Kathy happy. I don't know, we'll have to see. But uh, we're just going to take a quick run through here and see what we can find. And, and then we're out of here so I don't get in trouble. All right, so as far as I can tell, no BMW, no Mercedes. Volvo was tiny. Audi was tiny. I mean, we saw a lot of cars today, but boy, is that it? No BMW Mercedes at the New York International Auto Show is surprising to me. And one of the reasons I came in was just to check out that Mercedes. Oh, like the EQS and the EQS... EQE, right? EQE SUVs. Yeah. Well, we'll just go to a dealership and see no, them all piled up there. But it's sort of fun when they're at the car show. You know, and, in a, and, and next week when we're, when we're, we're going to be driving down to Florida yeah. in the Model Y, we'll stop in at the, uh, at the dealership, maybe take them for a test drive and see what you think of them. Yeah, that might just be nice. See. I think that'll be fun. Although but, the biggest uh, biggest takeaway from today was I like the Macan. I thought you were going to say it was the uh, the Hummer EV. Oh, I meant, yeah, well, I won't never drive that, although I thought that was sleek. And but you sexy. like it better than you like it better than the uh, Cybertruck. Cyber truck. It's more conventional. Well, is it conventional? The Cybertruck, let's review, I think it looks like a big giant piece of metal like a refrigerator. Yeah, but what if you wrapped it? Yeah, it would look better, but it's not for me. And I wouldn't drive the Hummer either, but boy, did that look good. Yeah. Great uh, car show, though. Lot to look at. Lot to look at. Cars uh, for everybody. Yeah. Big, small, electric, non-electric, somewhere in between. Really good time. And I, I did like seeing all the, the police departments, the fire departments, Absolutely. the Marines. Um, yeah. That was great to see them out here recruiting, which I guess they need to do. And, uh, and they were out here doing it. So hats off to them, yeah. even the New York State Police. We gotta go down to the meatpacking district and see the gravity. No, we have to go home. No, no, just no. Real, real fast? No. Uh, all right, I'll do that another weekend. <laughs> see you, everybody.